What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner, and today I have a pretty cool AR build that I wanna show you, but before I get into that, I actually have a few things I wanna show you today. So uh, before we get into the gun part, I just wanted to talk about a product that I have. So I talked about in a previous video that I was coming out with some shirts again. I've sold shirts on my website uh, for about a year or two now, and um, I haven't updated it in a while. Like I was just working off of inventory I had, but I decided to do another drop, and I talked about this one. So this is my Brass Goblin t-shirt. So it says Brass Goblin on the front, and then on the back, you literally have a Brass Goblin. And I just got these in, and I wanted to let you guys know, because if you're watching this video, they just hit the website. I got 25 shirts in, I'm keeping one, so sorry, you're only getting 24 available to you. I was supposed to get some 3XL shirts, they just didn't come in this batch, I ended up getting smalls instead, so if you need a small, act now, because I probably won't order more, they just don't sell as fast. But um, yeah, if you guys are looking to support the channel, go check out this. Um, the Brass Goblin logo is pretty cool, I like it. And then if you order the shirt, I'm gonna give you guys one of two free stickers, which I just dropped one, where'd he go? So if you order the shirt, I'm gonna throw in one of these in each shirt order. So we either have a Glitter Goblin or a Hollow Goblin. And yeah, they don't say Brass Goblin on the bottom, but one of these will be in with your shirt for free. So um, don't know which one you'll get, but yeah. So if you're looking to support the channel, go check out my website. It's called atroxco.com. And then my plan is uh, to do a shirt drop every single month for you guys, maybe multiple times a month. Um, I'm a one man show, but I should be able to get them out within a week of you ordering them. So I'm gonna bag up those shirts tomorrow. And if you order this weekend or you know this week, they'll ship within one to two days of you ordering it. So yeah, if you're looking to support the channel, go check that out. Again, it's atroxco.com. But with that being said, I wanna show you guys this build that I'm working on. So this is one that I've talked about before. It's a PWS, and this is the Mark 111 Mod 1M. It's a long name, but it's basically a piston-driven AR pistol. It's an 11.85 inch barrel, so it's an interesting barrel length. It's also a one and eight twist, and it's a 223 wild barrel. So there's a lot of like misconception with AR barrels. Basically, if your gun is only stamped 223 on the barrel, you are only supposed to shoot 223 through it. If your gun is stamped 223 wild or 556, you can actually shoot 223 rim or 556 through it. 223 wild, from what I've been told, is just a slightly tighter tolerance than 556. So it gives you like the maximum performance out of your barrel. Um, I know uh, like NATO or military guns are stamped 556, but that's just because they have a little bit more tolerance, um, where 223 wild is a tighter tolerance. So I'm not an expert on barrels or twist rates or anything, but having a one and eight twist allows you to stabilize a variety of rounds. It's like that perfect sweet spot because most like like entry level ARs are a one and nine twist and that is mainly meant for ideally 55 grain ammo. I know it could shoot up to 62 grain, maybe more, but with a longer twist rate, so it's a one and it's a one full rotation every nine inches. So a one and nine twist, it doesn't stabilize the heavier rounds like 77 grain. So the military uses a lot of one and seven twist barrels because they use a lot of 77 grain ammo, specifically for like 5.56 guns. But a lot of us civilians don't shoot 77 grain ammo. Like it's available and it's great ammo from what I hear but I can't afford to shoot 77 grain ammo like ever. So um, I have some and I have gun zero to it, but it's not a round that I just take to the range all the time. A one and eight twist is meant for about 62 to 77 grain ammo, but it gives you a little bit more stability with your 55 grain ammo. So hopefully like it's supposed to make it more accurate. And a lot of us mainly shoot 55 grain or 62 grain ammo. So um, from what I've researched, a one and eight twist is that perfect sweet spot because you, you ideally normally have one and nine or one and seven but there are a few companies that are making one and eights. And then again, 223 Wild will shoot 223 Remington or 556. It's just that perfect in between. So I like that PWS did that. They made it the perfect sweet spot for a lot of things. Even the barrel length, 11.85 inches, you never hear about that, but we hear 11, five or 12 and a half inch barrels are good barrel lengths. So they just kind of went in between. And I'm sure there's science to their part on that, but I'm again, not like an engineer or know that part. But what I do know is this is a piston driven gun and it is a long stroke piston driven gun. So that means you have a long operating rod. Um, basically, when you pull your bolt carrier group out, it looks kind of like an AK bolt carrier group because what is normally your charging handle is a piston rod, and that comes out because it's attached to your bolt carrier group. I'll take it out at the end of the video for you guys. This gun, um, I bought it, but I haven't actually cleaned it yet, and it's got a lot of grease in there, so I don't wanna get my hands dirty just yet, but I'll take it out at the end to show you guys what it looks like. I haven't shot this gun yet. I don't think I've actually ever shot a PWS AR. I think I shot their, I shot their URX at SHOT Show, but I haven't shot their AR. So I'm actually really excited for this. My project for this is to be somewhat of a bag gun because being a short barrel, this also, and I bought it used, being a short barrel, uh, this also has a law tactical folder on there. And then I was like, you know what? This, I have a plan for this gun. 
Um, I got this Steiner T5XI. It's a 1 to 5 by 24. It's a second focal plane optic. It's basically a crosshair with a red dot in there. Um, it's got some more bullet drop adjustments, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's just a 1 to 5 optic with a red dot. I've heard a lot of great things about Steiner optics. I've never used one. This one was a little bit salty, like it beat up when I got it, so I got a good deal on it. And then it's in a Spur 3026 mount. So yeah, the optic and the mount I got as a setup, and then this gun I got as a setup. Um, the gun came with a law folder, and then it has a Geisley trigger in there. I don't know exactly which Geisley. It's also got a Geisley H2 buffer in there. Um, that might be an SDE. So it's a flat trigger, two stage. It feels like about a three and a half pound trigger. I think that's the SDE trigger. Um, I don't know. The problem is with Geisley's, you can't really tell because the model number is like in, on the inside. So unless you guys have a way to tell triggers, but um, it feels about a three and a half pound trigger. It's got a radiant safety selector and it's got a Daniel Defense charging handle. Um, yeah, when I got it, it had a flat dark earth radiant charging handle and a flat dark earth safety selector, but the gun was mostly black. so. Um, I ended up swapping out the Radian for this Daniel Defense at our store, and then uh, FDE uh, safety selector for a black one. But yeah, looks pretty good so far. I also bought this Surefire Scout Light Turbo for it, and then it already had the Sons of Liberty Knox on there, so that's set up for a dead air suppressor. I do have a dead air suppressor here. Um, I think my main purpose for the gun is probably not suppressed, but I like the idea. You have to figure out which one of these it falls in. Come on. No. There we go. It only goes on one way. Um, it definitely would be sweet suppressed, but I want a black suppressor for it. Um, but what's nice is it'll be a good gun for suppressing, but it's also pretty small. So ideally, if I store it, it's not going to have the suppressor on there because it's long with that. But with the Surefire Turbo, it's got really good candela, so it's going to throw past the light no problem. Uh, the 1 to 5 will get me the distance that I need because I'm thinking of this as somewhat of a truck gun, but I don't leave guns in my car. Um, so if I did this, it would be kind of like a go bag. I did an AR-15 go bag video last week where I just talk about like you could literally put an AR or chest rig in a rifle bag like this and just have it ready to go. This is a Haley strategic bag. And I think it's a pretty cool setup because I can fit a chest rig in here plus a rifle. And with this one, I mean, I could fit a suppressed AR-15 with a chest rig in a bag this small. And I mean, it's not the smallest bag, but that is a perfect bag for like just throwing in your vehicle every day when you go to work. Well, I work in a gun store, so I could take this in. doesn't freak people out. I wouldn't take this to most jobs. but um, And I wouldn't leave it in the car either because you don't want someone to break in and steal this. But yeah, that would fit perfectly suppressed with my chest rig. No problem. I can carry plenty of mags in there. And it is small enough and convenient enough that I could just pick it up, put it in my car every day, and take it with me. So, um, But without the suppressor on there, I could get a smaller bag, which I'd like to do. I was checking uh, my rifle cases and my backpacks. I don't have anything great enough to fit this, because this is my normal backpack that I take to work, but it's too big for that. But then this case is too long without the suppressor, so I need that perfect in between to store this. Um, but Haley Strategic does do a smaller bag, so I might look into that. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for this build. I think, again, it's a good barrel length. I think this optic is a good magnification, like one to five. I mean, it's basically a red dot, but I get five power if I need it. Um, it's second focal plane. It's a little slow to magnify it, so I would like some type of, of quick detach lever, or not quick detach lever, uh, throw lever, because to crank it to five, I have to go one, two, like two and a half. So just having a throw lever will be nice, but it's pretty clear. Again, I don't have any Steiner optics. I have a Steiner laser and lights and stuff, but yeah, this will be my first Steiner optic, and I think it's a pretty beefy setup. It's not light because it's piston driven, and yeah, this is gonna be pretty sweet. So one other thing with this optic that it, it was, again, I bought it kind of salty. When it came in, it's like super like marred up right here or scratched up. It doesn't look bad. Like, I mean, it looks bad, but it doesn't look like physically bad. Like it's harming it. And then when I bought it, it also did not have any scope turret caps. So I had to call Steiner for this. And this is a pretty cool experience. You don't get this very often. But from the, set, from the time I hit talk to call the, just the Steiner generic customer service number to the time I had a tracking number for these scope caps was about 90 to 120 seconds. So about a minute and a half to two minutes from the time I hit dial, they answered and already had me a shipping label for these. And they didn't charge me for them. I'm not saying just go bug them for free stuff, but I just told the guy, I was like, hey, I bought one of your optics and uh, it was missing the scope turret caps. So, and he's like, no problem, just send me your address and I'll get you a shipping label. And that was it, like that was his first response, just no problem, send me your address and I'll get you a shipping label. 
I told it to them and literally in less than two minutes, I had a shipping label notice in my email for these go caps. So very awesome. And then it got th uh, to my store in like less than a week. So very cool. And then, um, yeah, the spur mount's pretty beefy. I like it, but yeah, it's kind of, it's like a lower mount, like a full co-witness, but it's not bad. I'm very used to like higher optics nowadays, but shouldering this, it feels pretty good, but it's nice. And then it does have a Sons of Liberty M-Lock sling mount here, and then it's got an SB83 brace on there. And I also wanted to talk about a sling that I got. So this is a Red Clover Gear sling. It's a, basically a brand new company here in Arizona. My buddy recommended me this sling company and asked if I would like to try one out. Um, they, aren't, they don't have a website up and running yet, but uh, this is something that's gonna be kind of newer to the market. And um, yeah, he reached out and asked if I would like to try one. I said yes, but I also said I would buy one. So I was given one for free, but then I bought one to put on another gun. And I have not played with one yet, but uh, he showed me a person. So like I held one, but I have not put one on my gun yet. But it's nice little packaging. Again, it's red clover gear. Uh, it's a very compliant sling. So basically everything is sourced in America, as far as I know. Very compliance is just like for military. They're trying to source everything in America. So uh, yeah, it says constructed of 100% very compliant materials in Arizona, which is cool. So Arizona company. And uh, the sling he gave me was a black multicam sling. And then what's cool is they come with quick detach points. And these quick detach points are made by GG and G, which are also American made. And GG and G is a uh, Southern Arizona company. So you, you have the option to buy them with or without those, but I like having the QD points. And it's a pretty low profile sling, but it's also got some padding, which I really like. And yeah, um, I know some people don't like the one inch nylon, but talking to my buddy about it, he says this stuff is very durable. You can almost tow a car with this. And I told him, I'm like, we should try. Like I, I bought a Forerunner this year. We should try to pull a car with this sling. So he says he might be down to do that later. And uh, if I do that, I'll show you guys. But um, yeah, it's supposed to be a very durable sling. And I have plenty of other branded slings with nylon like this. There, I've never had any issues with it. Unless you're, I don't know, using a saw against it or fire, you're not gonna destroy this sling from just pulling or dropping or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it feels pretty nice. It's kind of thinner padding, but I like how wide the padded part is. And then as far as like the black multicam, it's like a subtle black multicam. Anything camo wise, it's gonna vary, but this one is pretty black on that side. And then it's got a little bit more pattern on that side. But yeah, I'm just gonna set this up. It's got a pretty nice pull tab on here too. It's like leather or it feels like leather and it's quick and it's quiet. And I think it'll be really good on here. And then the one I bought from him was a arid multicam cause I like desert colors. And uh, I'm picking up a tan gun uh, later this year that this is probably gonna go on. So yeah, I got an arid multicam one as well. And I can't say to the quality of like actually using it yet, but this is kind of just like an unboxing, but um, yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's got adjustments and it's lightweight. So, um, and what's cool is it looks like you have plenty of space to adjust it, but not like an overkill amount of nylon. Some slings, they put so much on there. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I like having quick detach points. And again, these are US made. You can, you can find some really cheesy uh, QD points. So it's good to get like a high quality American made one. And uh, yeah, as far as slinging it goes, I've done a video on how to sling a gun. Um, so if you wanna check that out, go uh, just look up how to sling a gun on my channel. But basically I'm just gonna mock this up pretty quickly here. So I don't waste all your guys' time. Just pop this through here. Got another adjustment piece right here it looks like. So I got it fed through there on that side. So we'll pop it right here. Pops right in. Now let me adjust this one. But yeah, I like how they uh, stow this in the bag. My only thing is uh, if the owner of Red Clover Gear, I, I don't know the owner of Red Clover Gear, I know my buddy that's friends with him. Uh, my only thing for like a consumer is the package is a little transparent. So if you can make, if you can make it like a little clearer, I think it would show better because it's kind of hard to see the camo through there. I mean, as long as the store is willing to let you open it to check it, which this one has a zipper, which is nice, or, or the, um, so you can open it pretty easily. Um, but other than that, on like a darker camo sling, it would be hard to see through there. So that's my only thing from like a store point because I work in a gun store, so showing people. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty nice. I like it more than like the Blue Force gear packaging or some of the other ones. Um, so yeah, that's nice. But that's just like a store thing, not necessarily a consumer thing. But other than that, packaging's nice. It sits nice and flat on the table and easy to open. You don't have to destroy the whole package to get it. 
I honestly like that the QD points are already separated in case you don't need them for that specific sling or you only need one. Um, and you could buy them with or without the QD points. I think the sling is about 80 bucks, but these QD points by themselves on GG&G's website are about 15 bucks because they're nice American made QD points. So um, if you don't need those or you want to buy your own, um, you can buy it without those. I don't know how soon they'll be on a website. I know they're going to be at some local stores. I have the option to order these for our store. So if you guys are looking for one, um, we could definitely get you one. But this is probably not going to be set up exactly how I need it right off the bat. But let's see. So pretty comfy. I like the padding. It's uh, it doesn't like dig in because um, like I have Magpul MS4 slings too, and with them actually using mostly the like hard nylon, and it's a little bit wider. But when you like turn to shoulder your gun, it just digs into your neck a lot. And this might too, but it feels pretty soft. But when I sling a gun, I like it when it's fully tight. That when I just pick it up, it's just ready to shoulder with uh, without a plate carrier but then you can quickly loosen it for when you run a plate carrier so i would need to tighten this just a little bit more but not bad and uh, again it feels pretty comfy as far as like stability with quick detach i mean we could try it i mean feels pretty solid so i mean you're probably not going to do anything crazier than that even if you like fell down it's not going to like i don't know i mean I think most slings nowadays are pretty solid and this one feels pretty solid. And what's nice is you'll be able to stow it like on the gun pretty nicely. I don't have any like bands on any of my guns that where you just pull them out, but I need to get one. Other than that, I like the black multicam on here. It looks pretty good. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more to fit it to my needs. But yeah, if you guys are looking to support that red clover gear, again, I checked his website's not up yet. Um, but if you guys are interested in these, I can get them through the store that I work at. I might even be able to get them on my website. I just have to ask him how he wants to do that. But um, I know that these will be available here soon. So I'm kind of just like an early person getting them. So thank you if you're watching this. And uh, also my buddy that kind of put me in contact with this sling company, his name is Mason. He also helps with the Instagram page, HOA Enforcement. Uh, it's a pretty funny page. Uh, they do like, you know, is your, uh, is your house up to code? All fun and jokes, not like actually pointing guns at people, but it's just like tactical HOA. Just I don't I don't know how to describe it, but it's pretty funny. So go check out HOA enforcement. And uh, other than that, I mean, I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out so far. So other than that, I mean, that basically kind of wraps it up for today's video. I just wanted to show you guys me getting this set up, talk about the sling, talk about my shirts. Again, just go check out atoxco.com if you're looking to support my channel. Stay tuned for this Red Clover Gear uh, company. Hopefully they uh, get their website up soon for you guys to check out their products, but. I mean, it seems pretty nice and I'm looking forward to see how they do. And I'm glad that they're another Arizona company. And I'll also keep you guys updated on Red Clover Gear when they get their website up and running, but uh, hopefully it's here soon. And yeah, go support another Arizona company. But thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video. I just realized during editing that I didn't actually show you guys the piston rod setup. So I'm gonna show you guys that now. So it disassembles like a normal AR, other than, I forgot this has a law folder on there. So you gotta take out the little plunger needed for the folder. So. Oops. All right, this thing is super oily and greasy, which is fun. And now you should be able to take this off. That's only needed for law folders is they have this like little buffer piece, but it's not on a normal AR. Why is this stiff? Need the bolt to go all the way into the battery. Here we go. Yeah, once uh, there's no buffer back there, this bolt being piston, it's not like, it doesn't seem like it's really captured that much. Like it's just pretty loose, but I'm gonna pull the charging handle back and these are interesting. So yeah, I meant to say, I corrected it in the video, but I meant to say where your gas tube normally is, not your charging handle. Um, so this is like a rod setup. So this is not a gas tube, but it basically takes place of where your gas tube would be and as far as I know, like a normal piston setup, um, your gas goes down the barrel, up into the gas block, and nor instead of going through a gas tube, it just pushes this whole rod back. So that's what it means to be a long stroke piston, is it's cycling the whole unit back. But very interesting, and this bolt is very greasy. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's clean, but it's just very greasy. So I'll probably wipe it down and just re-clean it myself, but... Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, 
it looks, I mean, it, the grease is even in the chamber area, so pretty nasty. But it looks like there's a guide where the gas tube would be that this flows through. I mean, that's what I can see. And then putting this back in here, goes together pretty easily. So yeah, it's just not really captured in there. But yeah, again, this is my first PWS. So I'm not as familiar with the system compared to other guns, but I mean, it is a piston driven gun, just long stroke instead of short stroke. A lot of piston ARs are short stroke piston. But what's also cool is as far as I know, this has three adjustments for suppressing. So pretty nice, pretty greasy, but we'll get that cleaned up. And uh, yeah, I'll have this out at the range here soon for you guys. It's just very hot in Arizona, desert's still closed. So I only have access to a range every once in a while when I go with my friends. So um, yeah, other than that, I'll get content out for you guys every single day. Also go check out my shorts. One of my shorts hit 3.2 million uh, views this week and we got like 18,000 subscribers from it. So thank you to all the new subscribers, but uh, yeah, I was not expecting that. So second after, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video.